Julie has invited me to an undecorating party. That's right. I don't think it sounds no. much fun. Well, I what need are we your help. Do? We've got to take it all down. Oh God. Last year, there was so much holly and ivy. But your sister and liked that. And it, and it was just pouring out everywhere. It was excessive. It was I, too I, much. That was your sister. I think, what, what are you blaming my sister now? <laughs> Can't you just take no, responsibility no, for something? No, but do you like what I this did? This is pretty silted up. Not a pond I think that even Julie would want to go and swim in. Actually, maybe she could. That is the Enjoyment. dumbest idea I've ever heard of. Don't hit me with a ever. toffee apple. I'm going to take these and... With the um, changes that we're making at Mapperton, we are stopping driven pheasant shooting and we're going to be pulling out this entire pen to make way for beavers. This folder is kind of Alberta's special folder. How brilliant. My first box I open to discover this. Welcome to Mapperton, our family home and estate in Dorset in the southwest of England. Julie and I took over running Mapperton a few years ago from my parents, the Earl and Countess of Sandwich. It's a lot of work, but also a lot of fun. This place is full of fascinating stories, extraordinary people, and endless repairs. So please join our family on this journey of a lifetime as we put all our efforts into preserving this magnificent part of England's heritage. These are the only fake things on here. Oh, you're discovering. These are, these are the only, I mean, I think that they're real and they were painted. They're like pomegranate. Well, and then you, they were painted. You, you've used fake I wouldn't have ever, plastic here, here's the in thing. In our Christmas decorations. You know what, no. I, did, I did look at them on the stairs. They look good. And I saw the, ro I, the rose hips and the holly. They're not fake, and they're then, actually real. And they are real. So these are real. These are, are real. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 they're real. Okay. They've been painted. But they've been plasticized. Yeah, these are real, 100%. Um, and I okay. actually had your sister check at these and she said okay. they're real. Okay. So they're real, but you, they're put on wooden sticks. You haven't let the side down. They're not, they're not, they just didn't come from the estate. But so as everybody knows, well, maybe you don't know, but I had COVID over Christmas. And luckily I was able to get sort of three quarters of this done. Uh, this lovely ivy, all forged you know this from the estate, me of? apart from this. It reminds me of a toffee apple. I know, doesn't it? Do you have toffee apples in yeah, the Yeah, we, we probably invented them. Did you? Yeah, I think so. No way. Yeah, toffee apples. We apple. could just dip this in a glaze and give it a, yeah, I know. a good crunch. So Sorry, then, I interrupted you. Then on Christmas Day, um, no, yeah, on Christmas Day, I finished this. I had actually tested negative on Christmas Day, but I was still being very careful. But I went in here and I finished it as best I could. It's not great, but now we have to take it no, down. But, but no I, one really I, got to I, enjoy can I give it. You a, can I give you a comment? Yes. Less is more. Last year, you did no, this. No, two years ago. Or two years ago, that's right, because we had a COVID well, Christmas last year. We had a COVID Christmas year. last year. <laughs> last year, there was so much holly and ivy. But your sister and liked garland, that. And it was just pouring out everywhere. It was excessive. It was I, too I, much. That was your sister. I think, what, what are you blaming my sister now? <laughs> Can't you just take no, responsibility for no, something? No, but I, do you like what I this, did? Yeah, this year, it's much more sparing. Yeah. So and I think, it, I think it looks much better. So the fact that you didn't finish it and you got know, COVID this pretty, Stephen, was a good get, thing. Yeah, no, We're not at, getting COVID. I mean, no, 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 but look at how, I, I quite liked how, you're right, we had it so that it was everywhere. The other thing it's is pretty. that you said, which is important, is that no one so over Christmas got to enjoy it because we weren't really here because Julie had COVID. She was in this end of the house. We were in the other end of the mm -hmm. house. And so no one has seen this no, apart until from... now. <laughs> it's true. So please so, comment down below. So and tell Julie me how would much really you love this. appreciate <laughs> some love for her decorating, <laughs> even though we are now in January 
and Christmas. Maybe we could just leave it up for the whole year. <laughs> what do you think? We could give no. tours. It's a fire hazard. People could be, is it a fire hazard? I think so. Hazard. But I want to save these. It's a these. prickle hazard. I, want, I do want to save these because I did think that they added a little bit of red and they are real pomegranate. Top they are, um, and they just have a wooden stick. I know that they're not from the estate. In fact, I got these at the Covent Garden Flower Market um, a couple of years ago. So, but, so, so we do need to take this down and stick it well, in that is, pile there. This is there. the thing. Julie has invited me to an undecorating party. That's right. I don't think it sounds no. much fun. Well, I what need are we your help. to do? We've got to take it all down. Oh God. One of the sadnesses of Julie having COVID, and of course, it was a great sadness that you did have COVID. I know was of course that you didn't finish this but no. also that I throughout know. christmas you left a huge pile of stuff I sitting did. there that we all tripped over as we walked through claire's just tripped over. not only it. that but <laughs> up along here there were leaves until this morning when beryl came there were leaves <laughs> there were berries there was detritus Chicken oh look it's oh, oh oh steven steven quick come up here Come up are here. There, are there leaves? Look at this. I think when you decorate, no, it you have a responsibility I did. to clear up after you. It, they, There's leaves all up the stairs. Like best buy. Look at this. I know, I'm just ignoring you. Look at how pretty. I think this, I did such you, a good you job. You did, you did. I did, did. do. I mean, this was ivy from the estate and then everything here apart from these. Um, so we've got to take it all down, which is really sad. That is really sad, but I have a cunning plan. Uh -huh. Which is no. My cunning plans usually it. work, which is that we save it. No, you can't. For next year. No, it won't be these able to are, wrap around. These are evergreen. It doesn't and matter. And they're not going. They're no, going to. Can't. They're going to stay. It's like Christmas wreaths. Why do people no. make Christmas wreaths every year? You get a perfectly good Christmas wreath from the previous year. It looks exactly the same. Just store it in a dry place and put it up, and that saves you the. That is enjoyment. The dumbest idea I've ever heard of. Don't hit me with a ever. toffee apple. That's horrible. <laughs> so bad. Well, That's it, what they're okay. good for. I'm they're good be, for bashing if be, you. If I'm going to be hit over the head with a toffee apple, then I'm going on strike and I'm leaving the undecorating no. to her. No. So I shall see you no. later. No. Get some. I'm off. Get some clippers. I've gone. That's it. No. No. Retired. Come on. On strike. You've got to help. I'm going to take these and. Oh. For heaven's sake, here I am doing it all on my own, again. If you would like to help support this important part of England's heritage, please become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Mapperton Live. Right, I'm going off to Holacre today to look at the location for the beaver enclosure. And um, one of the things I want to do there is to set up a camera trap so we can see if there are any badgers about. But before we do that, I'm going to, well, I've just put my wellies on. And of course I am wearing my lovely, warm, comfortable Le Chimeau boots. Uh, we've got lots of Le Chimeau boots. We're very lucky that Le Chimeau are one of our sponsors for Mapton Live. Um, and I think one of the things that frustrates me about boots in my family is that nobody ever seems to clean them except me. So before we go out today, I'm going to clean my boots on what's called the Welly Washer. This is the Welly Washer, and it gives you instructions at the top there. It says, point your toes. So you take your boot and in you go. Look at that. Out comes the mud. And we have now got one nice, relatively clean pair of Le Chimeaux. One of the projects I'm really most excited about this year, 2022, is the arrival of beavers at Mapperton. And the fantastic news is that we've been awarded a grant to build the most expensive part of releasing beavers in the UK, which is the beaver enclosure. And the beaver enclosure is essentially a wire fence that uh, encloses the pair of animals that we're going to be bringing here. And the fence covers about eight acres. It's enormous. And it has these high sides and it's got, um, it's got a skirt, which means that the fencing actually goes down into the ground so the beavers can't dig underneath. Uh, and we are here in Holacre Wood, which is going to be the location of 
the enclosure. Uh, Holeka is a most magical wood and you can see that running down the middle of it is this stream. And of course beavers need streams because they've got to build dams. And so looking at this stream here, you can see there's quite a lot of water flowing and it's flowing easily because at the moment there's nothing to stop it. But we know that when the beavers get here, um, the first thing that they're going to do, because that's what a beaver does, is react to the sound of flowing water. And if I just stop talking for a second, you'll be able to hear what I mean. The sound of flowing water is the sound or the signal to a beaver that something needs to be done to slow it down. They like peace and quiet. They don't like this babbling brook sound that we've got in the background. So they will do everything that they can to interrupt that. And what that to them uh, means is chopping down some trees and creating dams. But then the question is, how do we enclose the stream? And that's actually the most interesting part because what we have to do, we can build a fence around the edges, but when it comes to the stream itself, we have to put in a, a grill. So if I show you over here and we have a look, um, this, is a, this is actually roughly where we're gonna run the grill. You can see that the stream has carved its way down and it's got walls on either side. And so what we have to do is get a custom made grill that slots in at a 45 degree angle onto the stream there. Uh, and that will stop any beavers from coming out this way. Because at the moment, beavers aren't allowed in the English countryside. They need to be kept in enclosures. Um, the government is looking at that and considering whether to allow them uh, what's called open release. But for the time being, if you want to have beavers in your landscape, you've got to have them in the enclosure. So this is where the, the grill is going to be. And this wood is essentially, uh, well, it forms a V. There's a valley in the middle, the stream runs down and then it works really well for the enclosure because we've got two tracks, one on each side, and it means that people who want to come and look at the beavers, me, for example, and I hope many of you, um, will be able to look down from the tracks into the enclosure. It's really hard to actually spot beavers because they're nocturnal and they don't much like coming out, but you can see everything that they've done to the landscape. You can see, obviously, all of the trees that they felled, um, and then most interestingly, you can see the dams. Hopefully you can find their lodge as well. But we're here for another reason today, which is that um, we also have badgers in this wood. And I want to make sure that the badgers and the beavers happily coexist. And we found a rather large badger set up on the, the left-hand side here. So what I'm gonna do is take this trail camera and attach it and see if we can capture evidence as to whether it's a live set or not. We're standing in one of the most interesting parts of the wood because actually there is this small pond, which I think either my parents or my grandfather created a long time ago. You can see that it's, it's pretty silted up, not a pond I think that even Julie would want to go and swim in. Actually, maybe she could. Far side, doesn't look too bad. But the great hope, of course, is that the beavers will restore this pond what I really want them to do is kind of dig a channel from the stream here so that we start to get more water going in there. And you can imagine that if they dam it at that end, they'd raise the whole water level up and we'd have an enormous pond or even mini lake, which would uh, really please Julie for some wild swimming. Looking behind here, you can see the other parts of the stream, but also you can see that there used to be a pheasant pen in here and the pheasant pen is part of the shooting infrastructure. We keep the, the birds in uh, and protect them from foxes. Uh, but with the um, changes that we're making at Mapperton, we are stopping driven pheasant shooting and we're gonna be pulling out this entire pen to make way for beavers. So I suppose in one sense, um, we are replacing one pen with another. But I think that these new creatures that are gonna to come to Mapperton are going to do much more for the ecology than the, uh, the pheasants ever managed. And that's a good thing. I'm standing on the top track at Holeacre. And what you can see on my left is the current fence line. So this is the old pheasant pen. And the pen runs, I don't know, 500 meters or more that way, up into the top of the wood. And then down below, 
you can see the stream. And then roughly at our level on the other side is the other track. So there are two tracks, on one on each side of the woods, which really makes this such a good place because it does mean that, that people coming to look will be able to see down and hopefully see the dams and the ponds and all the things. But before we can put the fencing in, one of the things we have to be sure about is badger activity because uh, badgers are protected um, in the UK and we need to make sure that what we're doing with the beaver fencing isn't going to interfere with their well-being. Badger well-being is very important. Um, so in order to do that, I've brought a camera trap and what I'm going to do is attach that onto here and then leave it for a few days and then we will see. Now looking at this, this badger set, you can see how they've dug in underneath the tree here. Um, but I don't see any evidence of, of fresh markings. So whether this is an active set or whether the badgers are just staying indoors for now, I think in this weather I probably would as well. When we come to put in the fence, obviously we have to remove all of this existing fencing. And it's something I'm quite looking forward to because one thing about shooting and pheasant pens is that they leave an awful lot of mess. Um, there's piles of wire sitting down on the track that way. There's plastic, um, there's feeding systems. I can see a big blue pipe run running down the hill over there. Um, there's all sorts of kind of corrugated shelters, etc. It's gonna be rather wonderful to get these woods back. And in this case, to hand it over to a pair of beavers. Now, I know that there are people who are going to leave comments and they're going to say, but you're not going to have any trees left. Well, I don't think that will be true. I think the beavers will, will take out some of these trees um, to help with their dams and, and in order for them to, to eat the foliage. But overall, I think the, the impacts that we're going to see here will be magnificent. And, um, and anyway, it's all enclosed. So there's no danger of them going off and damaging anybody else's land. Right, camera trap. I think I just switch it on like that. And now I've just got to attach it to here. good news is we didn't identify any badgers in the set which means it isn't live and that means we can go ahead with our beaver enclosure as planned later this year. Hi everybody I'm emerging from the Munimit room if you watched one of our videos before on secret places here at Mapperton the Munimit room is one of those secret places when I first moved to, well, moved into this house, I had no idea what a Munimit room was. And then I soon discovered that it's really the room in country houses like Mapperton where the archives are stored. So we have in there archives from the first Earl of Sandwich all the way up to, um, well, to Luke's grandfather. And, but um, Luke's great grandfather was the ninth Earl of Sandwich and he married an American heiress who came over during the Gilded Age, Alberta. And that is who I am doing my dissertation on. <clears throat> Many of you know that I'm doing a master's in country house studies and Alberta will be the basis for my dissertation. I'm unsure yet of what question I'll be answering. It is 25,000 words, but I have two years to figure it out. But I've gone through one folder. There are probably about 25 to 30 folders for just Alberta. She saved everything. She was fantastic at archiving. So this is a lovely, amazing photo of Alberta in 1895. So she was 23 years old here. So 23 years old here, I found that. This folder is really what I've discovered is kind of Alberta's special folder. Um, and I found a, a sort of purple leather pouch here. And inside here in particular, somebody gave her um, uh, some readings that says to Alberta's baby 1906 and there's some prayers in here I'm discovering that Alberta was a very very religious religious person 
Um, and I'm going to look more into that. But faith was definitely at the core of, of Alberta's life. But fast forward to something absolutely, especially for me, um, fascinating that I uncovered uh, is the connection that Alberta had, of course. She was born in Chicago. Um, she was from the Sturgis family. Her grandfather was Solomon Sturgis, and he's considered a real pioneer of, um, of Chicago and the way that it, it was shaped. Now, as I'm going through this, all of a sudden I, I come across these two, uh, one's a drawing, one's a photo of Buckingham Fountain. I mean, this is what I grew up with in America. Buckingham Fountain is of course one of the most iconic landmarks in Chicago. So I was wondering like, why does she have, you know, photos and drawings of Buckingham Fountain? In fact, this on the end says, uh, on the back says, Fountain in Chicago, given by Kate Sturgis Buckingham in memory of her brother, Clarence Buckingham, August 26, 1927. That is when uh, Buckingham Fountain sprung, um, was finished. So as I go through the letters, I see a letter from Kate Buckingham to Alberta. And through some more research, I find out that Alberta and Kate were first cousins. So Alberta's father, William, his sister was named Lucy. Lucy married, Lucy Sturgis married Ebenezer Buckingham, and they had a child named Kate, also Clarence as well. And so they are first cousins, and I find this letter a month after Buckingham Fountain opens up, uh, even less than that, three weeks. Sunday, September 18th, 1927, from Kate Buckingham, she's in Massachusetts, Dear Alberta, this is the first Sunday that I have been, I think, able, for many reasons, sitting down and she begins to write to her. One of the things she says is, um, I please see, uh, is from a clipping that I enclose, and I'll show you the clipping, um, this additional clipping, which Hollister, um, sent to us. Hollister is Alberta's brother, but also first cousin of Kate. Um, and it says here, all my friends have um, seen it and said uh, they, in, in one sense, sort of they, they love it. Um, but she continues on that says about the fountain, which is fantastic, um, that I happened to build a memorial that delivers in its appeal to reach everyone who has seen it both rich and poor, learned and ignorant, um, and thankful I could, uh, I could complete it. Um, I owe it all to my friend, and she names um, the architects who were involved in this, um, all the architects here. So in the Tribune, the Chicago Tribune, is this fantastic clipping that she sent along with her letter. This was September 5th, 1927. And it talks about the dedication of the fountain marks an era, era sorry, in the development of Grant Park. Um, uh, modifications are still to be made, etc. And then it goes down here even a little bit more um, about, uh, let's see, the donor, Miss Kate Buckingham, in the course of her European travels, often said to her companions, it's a shame how many of these beautiful fountains are not running and are going to pieces. And she built it for $600,000 back then, 1927. And it took a few years to build, obviously, um, was so much money then. And then she gave 300,000 for its perpetual care. Um, this is linked to the Art Institute of Chicago. There is still a Buckingham Foundation with the Art Institute. Her brother that she dedicated this to, Clarence, um, Gay, uh, was a collector of art and in particular of Egyptian art and gave a huge collection to the Art Institute that's still on display there. Her younger sister, Maud, also was a big art collector and gave um, her art collection to the Art Institute. And this, um, really the Buckingham Fountain is um, part of the Art Institute as well. So it was just, in, uh, here it says here, um, Miss Buckingham, Miss Kate Buckingham, who gave the fountain as a memorial to her brother, Clarence B uh, Buckingham, to the architects Jack Lambert of Paris and Bennett Parsons and Frost in association with C.W. Ferrier of Chicago, 
and to another Frenchman, Marcel Loyal, whose sculptures ornament the pool. So it definitely has that sort of Versailles uh, look about it. And that's what she was uh, obviously looking to, um, to have featured. So this was just a brilliant um, find for me. And there'll be many, many more things that I'll be updating you on as I go through my dissertation um, over the next two years. But how brilliant my first box I open to discover this. Thank you.